Hi, I'm John Townsend. We're continuing our series in Dutch oven cooking, and in this episode, we'll be baking a roast. Thanks for joining us today on 18th Century Cooking. In 1837, Catherine Strickland Parr wrote a little book called The Backwoods of Canada. And in this book, she's giving advice to folks that are going out into the frontier of Canada. And she has some amazing advice about not shunning this particular cooking device. And it's called, she calls it a bake kettle. And today we call them Dutch ovens. She talks about how highly versatile they are, that you can bake breads, you can cook meats in them and roast in them, all these different things. Today, that's what we're going to do. We're going to roast beef in a Dutch oven. So today's recipe comes from the little cookbook called Domestic Economy. It's 1794 and it's Maximilian Haselmore. And this recipe is called uh, rump au ragu. Basically, we know it as pot roast. So the ingredients we're using today really haven't changed. It, it's basically just like a pot roast you would do today. I've got a two and a half pound rump roast and we've got carrots and onions. Uh, so, you know, let's put this together. Let's season this with salt and pepper on all the different sides. Now, Dredge this in a little bit of flour. Okay, this looks good. Let's brown it in the pan. Okay, let's get this pan nice and hot to brown this. Uh, this is already probably pretty much up to temperature. Let's toss in some of our butter here. Yeah, it's hot. And here goes the meat. You want to simmer this until it's nicely browned on all sides. That side looks good. Now that our meat is browned on all sides, I can remove it from the pan and deglaze the pan. I'm doing this with cider. The original recipe actually calls for the use of small beer, but of course you really can't find that today. So cider is gonna work fine for this. Uh, I'm using maybe a cup or two here and just uh, scraping all the gunk off the bottom of the pan. Now the meat goes back into the pan and we will uh, place around that some onions. I've just half sliced these onions, there's three or four here, and three or four carrots cut up, not too small. Now we can put in this special little onion. You see, you see this uh, onion here, it's an onion that's got cloves in it. This is very, very common uh, in 18th and 19th century uh, um, recipes, and we'll just toss this in right up on top. And now in go some herbs. I've got thyme and rosemary. We'll put those right up on top. Next comes beef broth. I'm going to pour this until it's maybe two-thirds the way up the side of the roast or so. That looks good. Now we can put the lid back on and we're not going to put it back on the fire, but we're going to put it on a very regulated, a very controlled area. We want this to just bake at say 300 to maybe 350 degrees tops. So we don't want to just set it on the fire. It would cook too, too quickly. We want this to take three hours to cook. Now it's time to get this cooking area ready to uh, bake. I'm gonna put a layer of coals down first. This is uh, a little more than I would normally put down because this ground is wet, but uh, these will probably die off pretty rapidly and we're gonna have to come back and check. Now that that's in, let's lay the oven on top of those. And now I'm gonna put in a layer of coals on top of the lid. Now, it's just a little bit, right around the outside edge. We don't want to just heap this up. It'll get way too hot. Now, let's keep watching this. Every 10 to 15 minutes, I'm going to come back and check this oven to make sure that we haven't gotten too cold or that we're not too hot. And make sure to take this off and check the lower bed to make sure they haven't died out. Remember, not too much at the bottom. So every 10 or 15 minutes when we check underneath, we also want to rotate the the pot as it goes so we're going to rotate the dutch oven 90 degrees and we're going to rotate the lid 90 degrees to keep that heat even as even as possible now let's check underneath this oven and look oh yes these lower coals are way too cool now we i need to put a few more coals down underneath to keep that heat going and i'm going to check the top this still feels really good so i don't need to add any top coals just yet
Our beef has been uh, in the Dutch oven for well over th three hours and it's very done. So I'm going to remove all the contents of the Dutch oven here, the gravy, the meat, and the, the vegetables. And now in this empty pan, I'm going to put in a little butter and a little flour. We're going to make a roux and brown this uh, butter and flour up. And now we can return the gravy back in there so we get a nice thick sauce. And after our gravy is thickened, in go the mushrooms, about a half a pound of mushrooms sliced in half. Well, this is, it smells terrific. It smelled terrific the whole time uh, while we were waiting for it to be done. It looks wonderful. Uh, mushroom ketchup is one of those things that we could have even put into the gravy. I'm gonna put a little bit up on top because I know that'll add just, just a little bit that I really love. There we go. And now let's give it a try. Mm. The meat was done to perfection. Nice and tender. And um, all the vegetables are nice and tender too, but not, not mushy. Um, and that mushroom ketchup goes perfectly with this kind of a dish. This is a wonderful and simple. Uh, it takes time, time to cook, but uh, really such a wonderful dish for a large setting, a, a great family dish. Wonderful. This came right out of the Dutch oven. Do not be afraid to try uh, using the Dutch oven for dishes like this. Very simple um, and works perfectly. I, I want to thank you for coming along as we, you know, continue to, to try these things out, as we continue to savor the flavors and the aromas of the 18th century. If you're new to our channel, I want to welcome you. Uh, you can subscribe by clicking the button right up here. Uh, also, check out our related videos. Thanks so much for watching.